This story is from CNET. Now, we all remember back in November when the FCC under a JIT pie voted to repeal its net neutrality regulations. This decision resulted in a massive backlash by the general public, understandably considering how this would have potentially changed the internet as we know it forever, and definitely not for the better. Many critics of this decision, including myself, point to how this decision would allow for various forms of censorship by the ISPs with, the inter with internet fast, fast lanes and other forms of content restriction based on your internet package. However, there is some hope for those of us who don't work for Comcast. Back in May, a bill proposed by Senate Democrats to overreal the FCC and reinstate net neutrality passed in the Senate. The bill still has to pass through the House of Representatives, however, where it is expected to be met by harsh criticism from many House Republicans who argue net neutrality will stifle innovation, which is clearly not true. These rules help protect small businesses on the internet from censorship from big ISPs. The only innovation this would stifle is the ISPs like Comcast and Verizon innovating new ways to rip off consumers. Anyway, the bill also has to, has to make it past Trump. Oh, wait, that's an orange. Anyway, he has made his view on net neutrality very clear, and of course, he picked the side of Verizon, the big corporation. It's not clear whether he cares at all, or whether it's just being a, or whether it's just about undoing Obama's work, or maybe he even just forgot Twitter's on the internet. I don't know. Whatever the reasoning, this bill has a tough road ahead of it, and we can all all we can do is hope that House Republicans take the side of their constituents rather than large corporations. Now, while we were off, a lot happened in the tech world from Microsoft Build and Google I.O. Let's start with Google I.O. Now, there was a lot announced at Google I.O., way too much to get into all of it, so let's focus on the thing we all really care about, Google Duplex. Google Duplex is a project currently under development by Google to give the Google Assistant the ability to make phone calls, placing appointments for various things in Europe in a voice that almost no one would believe is a robot rather than an actual human. And they actually did it. Here's a clip of the demonstration sourced directly from Google. Oh, how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for our clients. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. That was pretty incredible, but also kind of creepy. Now, I've frequently been a harsh critic of Google's practices in the past, but this one I have to support them on. I know many people are freaked out by the idea that they could be talking to a robot and not even know it, but the question here I have to ask you is why? And I'm not trying to make fun of the critics of Google Duplex, I'm just seriously asking. Think about it, what's really the big deal? If it acts exactly like a human, then why does it matter whether it's really a human or not? I'm genuinely curious, we're going to pull the audience, cast your vote up there, and th if this does creep you out, tell us exactly why you'd at least want to be aware that you're talking to a robot rather than a human in the comments below. All comments are subject to approval by Fountain Web Deb before being posted, just because we want to keep the comments PC and on top. And finally, Microsoft Build and Windows. Now, Microsoft Build wasn't nearly as exciting as Google I.O. this year, so let's just skip to Windows 10. While we are off, the April 2018 update was released for Windows, and it is on all of our computers here now as a result. Most of this, is, most of this was just visual tweaks um, for the new fluid design language with the new transparency effect being a bit visible in more programs and other tools in Windows. However, Microsoft did remove the card style UI from Cortana and move it to the Action Center in a move that I'm not thrilled about being the one person who actually liked using Cortana. But the biggest change by far was the Task View, which has been replaced by Timeline, a feature that will allow you to go back in time up to 30 days and restore the session of apps you had open on any day within that time frame, even specific websites you had open. This had to be the coolest feature in a long time to see in any operating system and is undoubtedly unique and innovative. Microsoft also added a new fi file sharing system similar to AirDrop on Apple products. Thanks for watching Tech, our sources are in the description, and don't forget to like, comment, and check out Recap, where we talk about local school sports. So if you're out of state, you won't care. But if you go to Dominion High School, you'll probably care more about that than you cared about this. So go watch it. It came out on May 27th.
Thanks for watching. I'm on my own. You made it so. And now I'm chasing nightmares. I used to run when you do the great big things. Stop it, you when you laugh at me. Hope for us because I believe the home was just you and me. I thought you were the one for me. That's why I give you every.